Today we're going to be talking about the strong nuclear force. Now let's imagine that we're looking at a helium nucleus. Inside of a helium nucleus we're going to have two protons and two neutrons. Now let's think about what forces are acting within the particles inside of the nucleus. First off, there's going to be an electrostatic repulsion between the individual protons. This will be a very strong repulsive force which will be trying to rip the nucleus apart. Additionally, there will also be a gravitational attraction between the particles. Now, let's calculate exactly how many newtons those two forces are going to be. In order to do so, we're going to switch to our digital whiteboard. So, focusing in on the nucleus, we're going to see that the two protons are going to repel with an electrostatic force which I've called Fe. Well, how big will this force be? We can use Coulomb's electrostatic formula to calculate this. Remember, the electrostatic repulsion is given by the product of the two charges, Q times Q, divided by 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. The product of the two charges will just be equal to 1.6 times 10 to the power of minus 19 squared because both of the protons are going to have exactly the same charge. We're going to be dividing this by 4 pi and then multiplying by e naught which is 8.8 5 times 10 to the power of minus 12 multiplied by r squared. Now r in this case is 1 femtometer. Remember femto stands for 10 to the power of minus 15. So 1.0 times 10 to the power of minus 15. And then all of this is squared like that. When we input this into a scientific calculator, we're going to get that the electrostatic force is 230 newtons. Hmm. Think about this. 230 newtons acting on a subatomic particle which has a mass of 1.67 times 10 to the power of minus 27. This is a humongous electrostatic repulsion. Could gravity be responsible for balancing this out? Well, let's calculate the gravitational force as well. So, the gravitational force can be found using the expression for Newtonian gravity, essentially Newton's famous law of universal gravitational attraction. This tells us that the gravitational force, called that Fg, will be equal to minus gmm divided by r squared. Minus g, g is 6.67 times 10 to the power of minus 11. The masses will be the same. The mass of a proton, remember, is given in your formula booklet. So that is going to be 1.67 times 10 to the power of minus 27. I'm going to square this because in this case, the, we're dealing with two protons. So m and m are going to be the same. We're going to divide this by the distance, which is r squared. That's 1 femtometer. This is going to be 1.0 times 10 to the power of minus 15, and then all of this is squared. Putting this into a scientific calculator, we're going to get a pretty strange result. So 1.86 multiplied by 10 to the power of minus 34. Newtons. So this means that there's absolutely no way that the gravitational force is going to be balancing out the electrostatic repulsion. In fact, it's absolutely impossible to draw these arrows up to scale because the force of gravity is so incredibly weak in this case. So we have reached a new point in which if those were the only two forces acting on that nucleus, matter should not exist. If I have 230 newtons acting in one direction, then a negligible force acting in the other direction, then the nucleus would completely rip apart due to the electrostatic repulsion. In fact, we have discovered that there needs to be a new force which holds the nucleus together. And this is the strong nuclear force. Let's have a look at the properties of the strong nuclear force. Number one is that it must act on only very short distances. It is not a force that we really notice in the macro world, in the uh, normal human scale. So it only acts on some very short distances. It needs to be attractive in distances up to 
three femtometers. Notice how the sign of the force on this graph of force against distance is negative. So the force is attractive within this region over here. As soon as we reach 0.5 femtometers, the force will be turning repulsive. This means that in this region, which is below about half a femtometer, the two particles are going to be repelling. This ensures that two particles do not collapse right onto the same space together. Notice another interesting fact of the properties of the strong nuclear force. So once again, at very, very, very small distances below half a femtometer, the force is repulsive. So just here. Then as we get a little bit further away, so between half a femtometer and three femtometers, the force is attractive. So that is gluing the nucleus together. And then the force essentially is tending towards zero for distances higher than three femtometers. Okay, folks, well, hopefully this makes sense. If there are any questions, do let me know. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.